know what you're thinking. But just to let you know, you're not what I was expecting either. Here's, here's the great part about this. The dude who booked me for this, I said, what kind of show it is? He said, it's a very diverse audience. And he was right. Uh, Puerto Ricans, Jamaicans, and just regular black people. That's a... Uh, like, I actually, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, I experienced some... Uh, kind of racial profiling out there by the bar. <laughs> I was standing there and people kept on coming by and asking me questions, mistaking me for the owner. <laughs> I got real militant too. I went, fucking white man got to own a diner? <laughs> Why, because I'm white? neighborhood. Have you walked around this neighborhood? <laughs> Did they clone the same pit bull and just give it to everybody? Yes. yes they right, you know that pit bull I'm talking about? It's like inbred, right. got the huge chest, walking around like it's me. Ugh. Got one droopy eye. I was walking down the street and it was, it was a Haitian dude and he was built, no shirt on tattoos all over his body. He had the pit bull. I went to walk past him. He went, you want to pet him? I went, no. <laughs> I seen your ass coming. I was trying to cross the street, but there was traffic. <laughs> the best part of this, when I came to the stage, the white people just went, oh, thank God one of us. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting nervous the whole time, right? <laughs> See, he's got his hands on the table, just Not making any false moves. <laughs> See, this is what I love about the black community. This is what I love about the black community. You guys will just support other black ventures, right? Like, they just opened up a comedy club in the back of a diner, and you went, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> let's go to that comedy club. But I like, I like this crowd. Got beautiful black women. What's up, baby? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Nice and thick. That's how I like them. Oh. I like it when I'm on top of a woman and she's doing something wrong. I like her just to throw me off. Boom! Do it right! Right, I see it again. No, I'm not lying to you. I love black women. I used to date black women exclusively. I had to stop that shit, though. Right? Black women will fuck you up. There is no right? It's different. Black women are completely different. If, For instance, if you're dating a white girl, you do something stupid, you're going to get in an argument. Spanish girl, 50-50 chance, you're going to get cut. Right? Black women don't give a shit. They'll punch you right in the face. Boof! <laughs> and then hope you do something back, right? And, right? You raise your hand to them, they're like, yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Let's do this shit. <laughs> you better leave. Right? When you leave your own house, you know you're scared, right? You just leave. You don't even go back for your clothes. Just leave it there. White dude, uh, I don't know if you're thinking about going to the other side. Yeah, no, you're the only white dude. No, that... He's acting like he belongs. Who, me? Is he talking to... Me? I'm gonna give you some advice. If you ever switch over, and you start dating a black girl, and you come home, and they're sitting on the couch, and their neck is doing this, and they're clapping, 
Especially if they're clapping on every syllable, you know what I'm saying? What I tell you about your bullshit. <laughs> Just leave. Just leave. Don't even ask. Ugh. I love doing stand-up comedy, I'm not gonna lie to you. Not this particular show, but I do love doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> it was funny, because the dude with the camera just came walking, he came like in the front, he goes, yeah, we're just gonna bring you out in the parking lot and film you. <laughs> right? Last time somebody pulled that on me, I got robbed, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we're gonna film you. No, I love doing stand-up comedy. I love traveling, uh, but I do not like flying because I, 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 I can't grow a beard. Not that I'm physically incapable, but it, just, it, it, it hinders me from getting on the plane because I don't know if you got a good look at me, but with a beard, I look like a cross between Eugene Levy and Osama bin Laden's nephew. <laughs> right? I get the additional, I get to always get the additional profile. It's racial. It's racial, and that's what I understand. That's what the black man been going through all these years, right? <laughs> but that's the one time a black man will not be racially profiled. Because we want you on that plane when that shit's getting hijacked. <laughs> right? Somebody stands up and goes, we're hijacking this plane. You're like, no, you don't, motherfucker. <laughs> We're going to Atlanta. <laughs> Black people are always going to Atlanta. I don't know why, but that's where you guys go. We're all going to Atlanta. I do, I get racially profiled all the time. Here's the thing. I'm not even Middle Eastern. Italian, German, Dutch. Apparently you mix that together, put a beard on it, Iranian. I always get uh, racially profiled. Um, when I go through the TSA, and, and, and I don't know if you've been to the airport lately, the um, security makes no sense at the airport. Next time you go to the airport, I want you to look for this. As you're going through the TSA checkpoint, there's a sign there. This is what it says. No flammable liquids, firearms, or explosives beyond this point. <laughs> I call the guy over and go, dude, dude, let me talk to you. Are you telling me I could have been walking around this airport with a gallon of gasoline, a Luger, and a stick of dynamite? If I turn it in right now, I can get on that plane. But I can't have more than three ounces of shampoo? Really? Your security sucks. Here's what I want you to do. Next time you go to the airport to entertain yourself, ask for the brochure of the items that you're not allowed to bring on the plane. They'll give you a brochure with the, the, a picture of the item, a circle around it, and a line through it. You know what the last three items are? A truck battery, a machete, and a chainsaw. <laughs> you think there's anybody showing up at the airport with a truck battery, a machete, and a chainsaw and going, what? <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> I got lawn work to do when I get to Florida. All right, I'm going to get out of here where things are going good. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Getting my tent and getting the fuck out of here, you know what I'm saying? No, actually, um, you guys obviously are not aware of this because you've never seen me before, but I actually live in Harlem. Uh, yes, I live in Harlem, but here's the thing. That's no big deal right now, right? You can be, le you can be white living in Harlem. I moved to Harlem in 1988. That's when that shit was a badge of honor to be white in Harlem. <laughs> I'd go downtown, people go, where are you living now? I'd go up in Harlem, they'd go, ooh. It's <laughs> a true story. My first night in Harlem, 1988, I was on 122nd in Lexington. I locked myself out of the apartment. <laughs> I have to walk around the building, through an alleyway. Had to climb up on a fence. As I'm climbing up on the fence, I reach over to try to open the bedroom window. 
I look behind me on the other side of the alleyway is an old black guy smoking a cigarette. This is exactly what he says. <sighs> Baby, come look at this shit. <laughs> There's a white guy breaking into an apartment in Harlem. <laughs> this neighborhood's going to shit, I gotta be honest with you. Listen, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much. My name is Rick Stokes. <laughs>